what did you make of uh, the performance, the final performance of the week? A continuation of that risk on rally that we've seen over the last three weeks. So another good performance by the Australian market and really the materials, the industrial sector is doing extremely well. In fact, if we have a look at some of the standout performance, we saw liners up by 11.3% in one session and Aluka up by a massive 7.4% today. We did see Aluka with some broker uh, brokers initiating uh, research on the stock and we've got CSLA with a buy recommendation and a $20 target and Goldman Sachs with a buy recommendation and a $24 target. So it looks like the Lucas shares well boosted there. Generally, we saw defensives out of favour, although the telecom sector bouncing back after a soft performance this week. And of course, we were watching those numbers coming out of China, the HSBC PMI numbers coming in at 48.8, an improvement from December, but still in contraction territory. And of course, the US futures watching those as well, given that we've seen Google and Microsoft reporting after the US session. Google shares actually tanking quite uh, severely. So the US futures down by 0.1%, but still the Australian market up by 0.1%. 6% today. And, uh, the Google results are after the close, but I suppose during that session we got a couple of good reads uh, from Bank, and Bank of America and, and Morgan Stanley helping boost sentiment. More broadly though, I mean, what have you made so far of US reporting season? It seems many people putting it down to at the moment vying for sentiment is the US reporting season versus the issues in Europe. Is it as simple as that? It will be next week when China is on <laughs> holiday, so then you take China out of the equation. I mean, expectations that are uh, and hopes that China will ease monetary policy during this uh, Chinese uh, New Year holidays has really driven a lot of the commodity prices and part of that risk rally as well. We've seen copper, zinc as well as uh, aluminium up by 10% in the year to date so far and that type of action is really going to slow down next week so it is expected that the commodity space will take a breather for the next couple of weeks as China is offline and that's going to have a big impact on the Australian market and of course with China offline as you mentioned James it is going to turn to the battle of Europe versus the US. The US earnings season very much in focus and this earnings season, this quarterly earnings season, there's expectations for growth of seven and a half percent in earnings. That's the first time in two years that we haven't seen double digit earnings coming out of the US. So very low expectations going into this earnings season but there's been a number of disappointments as well. We've seen disappointments from the likes of JP Morgan, Citigroup as well as Google coming out after the bell but a little bit of release from the likes of um uh, from the likes of Bank of America and Morgan Stanley, which beat expectations, although Morgan Stanley coming out with a loss, it was just a smaller loss than what the market was expected. So a bit of a mixed bag from earnings season so far, not a lot in terms of expectations, and we've had um, some pretty big misses as well as some pretty big losses. In terms of Europe, I mean, we've seen extremely low volatility on the markets at the moment, the VIX index under 20, and it almost feels like the calm before the storm or the eye of the storm, and I guess if Europe does start to heat up, we'll say see that volatility spiking. So expectations that this low volatility is not going to last too much longer given the Greece uh, debt renegotiations and the problems in Europe. And I guess the market watching that very closely coming up to the 30th of January, the EU summit. Just out of time. Julia, winners and losers for the week. You mentioned a couple of winners today. What about for the week? Well, the market's done very well for the week uh, so far. In fact, in 2011, um, two, in 2012, the new year, uh, what we have seen is a rally in those stocks that were the worst performers last year. And we've really seen that speed up this week. This week, uh, some outstanding performance, performers include One Steel and Paladin. These two stocks up by a massive 18% for the week. Now, they were down 70% last year. Goodman Fielder also doing well up by 18% this week. And that stock was down by 65% last year. So the 10 worst stocks on the ASX in 2011 continue to do well. In fact, in 2012 so far, these stocks are up by a massive 21%. The best being White Energy, which of course was the worst performer last year with a loss of 89%. It's now up 46% in the year to date so far and Kangara knocking Dart Energy off second place it's up 37% in the year to date and of course last year the stock was down almost 70%